This video probably should be titled, I've been using GitHub wrong and you probably have too, but that's just too many words. So let's get into using GitHub properly because there's things I've been doing for years now and they're just bad. They've wasted some, tons of my time and I, I really want to teach you what I've learned and, and possibly help you out as well. So first off, when it comes to authentication, let's get on the desktop, kind of go through all the different commands because I want to talk about command line and the GitHub desktop and then follow that up with just proper GitHub procedure, no matter which one you use. So let's do it right here on the desktop. I've created a little copy paste. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for this but just choose whatever operating system you're running your GitHub through, Mac, Windows, Linux. Uh, it's pretty much just the GH package uh, on most NIX systems. So from our terminal, you would just paste that in, make sure your GH package is already installed. Chances are you'll need to install it. Coming back to here, we can do our first time setup. This is authenticating. Now you might be thinking, why are you using this GH? Why not just Git? Because most people already have Git installed, well, a lot of times when you go into like your GitHub and let's pick like Fedora Titus and let's just do like a Git push, it'll say, hey, I need to authenticate. You might use a username and password to do that, but there's a problem. A little bit ago, password authentication was removed and you have to do what's called SSH keys to get authenticated. Uh, and that can be very cumbersome. I initially didn't even know GH existed and I was like doing like an SS agent and then launching that on bash. It was just a huge complicated mess. And then I found GH I was like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I wasted so much time. So install just GH and not do any of those other workarounds you see posted online. Uh, it'll save you days of time as I wish I knew this was. So we're just gonna do a GH copy or off login. And we'll fix up like our Fedora Titus to use the proper one and we'll do a proper git pull, git commit, all that. So let's just do a git auth first thing, enterprise or regular. You're going to probably want regular. Uh, I've already authenticated, but let's just go ahead and re-authenticate uh, and then choose your protocol. I would say SSH, uh, upload your SSH or public key to your account. Uh, typically, this will create a new one if one doesn't already exist. I obviously have one on my system that we'll use. Title the key, you can just hit enter and it'll title it GitHub CLI, which I think is pretty good. And then log in with your web browser with this code. So I'll just highlight that code, Control Shift C, and then hit enter. That'll launch into here. We paste that in, hit continue, and then simply authorize GitHub. And that's it. Congratulations, you're all set. And we go back to here and it's like, hey, there we go. We're good. Now, this one failed probably because I already had it installed and everything, so it's already in use. Uh, but next time when we go to do our git push, you'll see this still fails. It's still not fixing our repos. It's still wanting that authentication. And then we just need to change what its origin is so we can do that. Back on our little cheat sheet here, uh, you'll see git remote set URL origin. That's what we need. And then this entire uh project so let's uh let's do it for fedora titus uh now there's probably a lot faster ways you probably don't want to do it but i want to show you how you'd look this up so we're going to take the long way today and then we're going to just find our repositories and find fedora fedora titus right here and then we're going to go to code and click ssh and copy that that's where we get our origin so we'll do the paste of this grab this, copy it, come back, and then paste it all in. So this just sets the origin. So then if we do a git push, it would find whatever changes we had and do it. It's all authenticated. It's using our SSH keys. Everything's right with the world. Now you understand how that whole process works and you could fix this up through command line, especially when you're doing common gits. Uh, we'll get into how the CLI is a little bit better than our graphic counterpart over here. The graphic counterpart's really good because there's like these different stages of GitHub. And if you're unfamiliar with GitHub and how it works, by all means, watch my other video on GitHub. I'll try and link it up below or, or up above. Basically, you have a fetch to see if there's any changes. You have commits if you're going to commit a change. You have add if the file doesn't have. So 
when we have these checked and these don't exist at all and you see the plus, that's a new file, that's basically saying git add. And then when we say, okay, adding new article, well, this is a git commit message. So this adds it, this is the git commit, we commit it to master, and then we do a push. All those things are in tandem. It's all happening so quick on the desktop, it's hard to see that. I just kind of want to walk through that because we can do the same thing over here on the command line, but much faster, especially if we're doing multiple commits per day and we're just doing a lot of things uh, through here, or maybe we're in our actual file right here or our actual project. And instead of popping out, doing all that through GitHub desktop, we could just do like a Git uh, status right now. You can see all the different things that are happening and we could just do it all right here without even leaving code if we wanted or Vim or whatever, uh, you know, editor you're using. So now that we understand kind of how desktop works, how the CLI works, we can make this even better because this is where the CLI becomes faster out of the box. Obviously, GitHub desktop just looks like a way better product. But this is where with the experience and time and trial, you get a lot faster with the CLI. Uh, and the big thing is what we do wrong with Git. This is the problem where people just don't understand how GitHub works. They just think, throw everything up there and hope it all works and GitHub figures it out. The big thing is to commit often. So anytime you're doing a change or you're adding something or you're fixing one feature, you want to do a commit. Too many times do I see, or I've done myself, where I've done 10 different feature additions in one commit in one push. That really doesn't do anything. I should be committing after every single feature change or, you know, big thing. If I'm moving from one section to another section and I'm doing another commit for something not un unrelated to those, I need to be doing two commits, not one. That makes it to where if that one thing broke it, I could just revert that one thing because it was a commit, which makes it so much easier. So let's make this faster through the command line. Let's first fix our aliases. We're going to just add what's called gcom. This is just a function I've created to put into bash RC and lazy G or lazy git, basically where it's just a huge push. It just adds everything and commits it all in one go. Uh, so let's copy this. Look at our bash RC. Uh, come here to the bottom and we're just going to add these two functions. As you see, I have obviously my app to Nala functions. Now I have these Git function. So let's save that out and we're sourcing our bash RC or you could quit and relaunch your terminal if you don't want to source it. So now that we have that, we can come back into our GitHub website is what I'm currently working on. We could do a Git status to look at it. And then let's say I wanted to commit. I was like, hey, I, I'm pretty much done with this section of the project. I just do a GCOM and then put GitHub article. Enter. And that just does the commit. So then as I'm working, I would just do gcom article. And what that does is it adds any files and then it can, does the commit for me, which is really nice. Now, some people think that doing a git commit dash a message and then all that, uh, you know, message here like that would add and do it. Uh, the git commit dash a is very similar, but it requires the files to already be tracked. And since these are new files, they're not tracked, it wouldn't actually commit them. So that's why I did that function for the GCOM to add everything much like GitHub desktop does and also do the commit all in one go. And you can toy with those functions to suit your workflow. I just wanted to show those two things. And then at the end of all this, when we're completely done, uh, let's say we built our website and we're like, okay, it's looking good. I might just do a final build just to make sure my pl public folders are good. And then I would do a lazy G and hit enter. And what this does is it would completely do it all, but it's asking for our authentication because we still have yet to fix that much like we did before. Let's, uh, let's fix our authentication and I'm just going to grab that Git. Now I don't necessarily have to grab all this. I just find it a little bit easier to do it through here. But if you're a really fast typist and you really know the addresses, you could do this all by memory. I just don't have it quite dialed in yet. So let's do the git and then we type in that. So it would be git at github.com colon your username 
forward slash uh, the project name dot git. Uh, so if you can remember all those things in one go, you don't even need to tab out of this. You can just do it all right here. So now if we do the lazy G, it would commit it. But one little quick fix, because I'm not quite ready to publish this as today is the 20th. I started the, in on the project on the 19th and we're releasing it, obviously, the day you see it, which would be the 23rd. So I don't want to publish it until that date. We'll, we'll dial that in. And actually, we could put Mac OS right here as well. And if we look at status, we do our GCOM to just comment out, hey, what, what do we what do we do that adds it? So that's looking good. So then if we do lazy G, if if we were going to just do it all in one go, we could do it that way or we could just do a git push. And that pushes it out and we've done the commit all right there. Uh, so obviously the lazy G would be the git add, the message and the push all in one go. So instead of doing all these in multiple steps, you could do it in one. I would never recommend to use lazy G except maybe at the end of the day on your last commit, uh, because that's when it pushes to the public. But as you're working on a project and you finish a function, you want to do GCOM and then just type out whatever it is that's going on. And why I say do commits often is when you have those, you can come into any project and see, hey, what What's been going on with this project? Oh, you know what? This commit six minutes ago when we did this, uh, this is a problematic. Uh, so actually I could go back and revert this commit if I wanted. Because as we do updates and I'm like, hey, there was a problem with this article or whatever it might be with your project, it's very easy to go in and go, oh, you know what? We need to undo that commit. And then you have each commit, even though you might be one push and it'll have all these commits and that one push, it's easy to revert back. That's what I didn't understand about GitHub when I first started was I wasn't doing enough commits. I was just going update, massive update. And then I would I would change 50 things. Well, that's not a great way to track what you're doing in your GitHub. That's an awful way to track it. Idiot, come on. <laughs> that's why you do multiple commits. And then when you go to push it or you do a pull request, let's say you're working on somebody else's project, they're going to look at it and go, oh, wow, this is so nice. I can see each commit he did. There's 10 different things. I like nine of these commits, but I don't like this one commit they did on the pull request. All right, well, I'm going to just uh, revert that one commit and then take the other nine on the pull request. Because if I just got a massive dump on an update or a big pull request, a nuke the world pull request that doesn't have but one commit on it, I'm going to deny it because I have no idea. I don't want to sit there and sort through each bit of your code to figure out what the hell it does. I'm just going to deny the pull request because it just isn't well documented. And that's why we use GitHub. And I want to know, you know, hey, am I the only one that was doing like these ridiculous commits and pushes? Yeah, that's horrible. You should be doing tons of commits, one push at the end of the day. Or, you know, in an ideal world, that's how it would work. But uh, too many times I see people just do one massive commit with a push, and I was guilty of this. So let me know in the comments. And with that, uh, tell me what else I'm doing wrong on GitHub, because there's so much to learn. But after I got this dialed in, a lot of my projects cleaned up really nice. I denied a bunch of bad pull requests, and I started to really see who was a good contributor, who was a bad contributor, and it, it, it made my project so much better as I learned to collaborate better with folks and also understand Git much better. And I still have a long ways to go, but this is the progress and how I'm using it wrong. And maybe you are too. So with that, I'll see you in the next one.